good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is, welcome to Fishery. So, a very fascinating creature has exposed itself to us. Not in that way. Uh, it has come up from the depths of the ocean. And this is a fish that you may know of if you're a fish lover, as most of us are here in this community. But it is the longest fish known to humans at this point in, in time. And it is the oarfish. And it is a fish that reaches well over 50 feet in length. Uh, we don't know exactly how big these things get because they live in the deep, deep oceans. However, this Goliath creature was discovered uh, yet again. We find them from time to time washing up. But they just discovered one uh, of very large size off of the coast of Taiwan. And there was a diver by the name of uh, Wang Cheng Du who uh, was off the coast with uh, three or four other folks training them to dive when he came across this fish. Now, these fish hang out in the water uh, vertically, which is really bizarre, uh, especially, I mean, if you've ever seen a headstander in, in freshwater aquariums or whatever, that's a little weird when they're at a 45 degree angle just hanging out together. Well, these fish go straight up and down uh, very frequently, or they'll be at a slight angle, and they are a metallic reflective color with this red piping of lines and kind of a red pattern that runs down the, the body. They are really, truly a sea serpent if there ever was one. You could see where myths in ancient times could easily have come from this. You know, a combination of like trouble with the ship or something like that. And then you see one of these, man, you could definitely see where you'd think that thing caused that problem, uh, especially if they're getting something like 20 meters long, that's pretty wild in size, you know, 50, 60 feet long. And these fish, when they're fully grown, we think they get about 600, 700 pounds, maybe 300 kilos, uh, something like that. And they seem to live a pretty long life in deep water. Now, these fish, they pose no threat to humans. And as seen off of the coast of Taiwan recently, these uh, fish, they're they're usually found when they're dying unfortunately in the last moments of their life and this was no different they were the the one they found had holes in it left by what they believe was a cookie cutter shark and a cookie cutter shark has a mouth kind of like a lamprey or a circular mouth and it has a jaw that has formed to basically saw back and forth it can tilt its jaw and it can go open like a normal jaw up and down but it can also move on the other axis and kind of spin around and suction on and it will take big chunks of uh, flesh out of creatures when it's chewing on them it's even attacked humans before so speaking of other sea creatures that are crazy so this fish had these two massive holes in the side of its body uh, that must have been from a, a large size cookie cutter shark uh, most likely anyways now, cookie cutter sharks, they're a small shark, and while they have bit humans in the past, it's been documented, and they bite whales and uh, sea lions and seals and uh, sharks and other large fish, sunfish, whale sharks, things like that, uh, they don't usually end up causing uh, a fatality unless it gets infected or something. Um, so it's kind of an interesting strategy that they just kind of take a bite and then move on. Uh, but back to the oar fish, these are a really interesting fish in their relationship to folklore in both mainland Asia as well as in a lot of islands in the Pacific. So all the way out into Polynesia and all the way uh, from the northern uh, parts of Japan all the way through down into the Philippines and Indonesia, there's different folklore associated with these fish. And some of them say that, you know, the fish goes down and brings the sun from the bottom of the ocean each day back up uh, from some of these island countries. Uh, that's a myth. Now, the most pervasive myth is that they are harbingers of massive earthquakes or rather whenever you see them there's going to be an earthquake or there was an earthquake recently uh, and there was actually some thought until the last two or three years 
uh, that that maybe there was something to this. That maybe they're such poor swimmers because of what a crazy long body they have and how they hover in that weird position in the water. That perhaps maybe there's something that that actually causes them to die. Like the wave, uh, the compression wave of an earthquake or of a landslide under the ocean or a volcano under the ocean, which can be associated with earthquakes and uh, tectonic movement. It maybe it causes them to uh, die. And and so they they thought that perhaps. There was some sort of link, and so the study. There was a study done, and another follow-up study done by two different Japanese universities, where they plotted out every single sighting and washed-up or fish uh, record that they had, and then they plotted out the nearest and uh, most severe earthquake that happened, uh, both the nearest and the most severe earthquake that happened with within uh, 48 hours or something like that. Now, they didn't find any correlation between the earthquakes and the wash-up of these fish. But, in this crazy case just now, they they saw this. It kind of has gone viral on Twitter. And these divers brought back some footage, obviously, of, of this beautiful creature. And yet, right almost simultaneously, uh, somewhere within a few hours, over in... Alaska on the Pacific Ocean, the far side of the Pacific Ocean from Taiwan, obviously, there was a 7.4, 7.2. Uh, they're still kind of debating on what, what the magnitude was. But there was a big earthquake out in the middle of nowhere uh, off the coast of Alaska. But nevertheless, it's going to make those people who still say, you know, there's something to that earthquake thing, say that this is the earthquake fish. And, you know, the the earthquake myth has then kind of become changed over time and now sometimes they call it the apocalyptic fish or the uh end of times fish or you know the, the, it gets gets overblown in the headlines essentially and so they, they start coming up with more and more theatrical uh, uh uh names and and ways to describe what this fish is a harbinger of or whatnot but have no fear the fish can't hurt you they eat little squid and krill and shrimp small fish or fish are a peaceful giant fish, as most of the large fish out there in the ocean seem to be. They're, they're gentle giants, and uh, they can be very long and beautiful, and they are kind of creepy looking. Uh, I'll give them that. But they're just another natural wonder that uh, we're still learning about. And another odd bit that I wanted to mention is that out of all the oar fish that wash up in the shallows, live between 1,000 and 3,000 feet deep in the dark almost, or sub very low light to dark to total darkness and the abyssal zone is like there that's where they like to kick it and some of them have very interesting uv reflections and uh and markings and things but they come up and when they die they're almost always missing their tail and it's almost always at the same spot at one third of the length of the fish and we don't know why uh, that is but it almost certainly it appears that they are able to reject that tail like a like a lizard and and uh throw it off and so maybe there's a predator like a giant squid or a sperm whale or some sort of big predator that's down there hunting them and it makes you wonder what's hunting a 56 foot long fish uh and and you know even a third of that what what is going after a 15 or 20 foot long section of fish uh you know as a snack and that tides it over while the fish makes its getaway so some things to think about. I thought it was an interesting story. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Have a good one.